In today's news, Kyron McMaster establishes a new BVI record at second place finish. We also see the new Rotary Club making mangrove restoration a mission. Nanny Key and 284 Foundation partner for exciting photo and art competition. And additionally, the BVI Red Cross marks 65 years with commemora commemorative sorry, license plate. And the police are actually warning against taking intimate videos and photos. Um, and that is, of course, coming out of the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force. All this and so much more on today's edition of 284 News. The wind up. What is the help? I'm freaking out. Is about these people. It's always a pleasure coming to you live and direct from the... What's poppin'? What's really good? Davis has won it for the Lakers! A pleasant good evening, viewers. It is Tuesday, a terrific Tuesday here in the beautiful British Virgin Islands. Tuesday, May 11th, and we are coming to you live out of 284 News. My name is Javon Wilson. And I'm Ron Grant. A happy Monday to each and every one of you. Before we get into our newscast, just touching on a few summary items. Of course, the local company, our local company, has assigned a uh, $299,000 uh, contract to repair the East and Longlook Community Center. Kyron McMaster sets a uh, record for a new national record as Olympic approach. We're going to get into that and show you the very exciting uh, finish that he completed. Uh, public consultation on a controversial police act has been postponed uh, once again, and French Delhi van that was stolen has been recovered. In addition, uh, Premier's vaccination pitch uh, to tourism sector lacks clarity, says the BVI CCHA boss, and concerning the Premier debunks a uh, fictitious article and says the timing is curious. In addition to that, several job ads for educators raise concerns about the teacher shortage here in the British Virgin Islands. Now beginning on the local scene, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force uh, Family and Juvenile Unit is urging persons not to take photos or participate in photos or videos of an immature nature. Now increasingly, persons, particularly young people, are reporting that their intimate photos or videos are being circulated on social media. Head of the Family and Juvenile Unit, Inspector John Antoine, says that the perpetrator of such an act, who is usually a former companion or friend, can be charged for violation of privacy. The offensive images or videos may remain on the internet in circulation indefinitely. He said, and I quote, we will investigate each case which is reported to us, but the harsh reality is that we may never be able to stop the circulation of these images once they are released. Therefore, recovery from this tragic mistake is difficult. My strong advice is to choose never to record or to participate in a photo or recording that would likely bring embarrassment or shame if it is to be made public. Now, under the Cybercrime Act 2019, a person charged with violation of privacy by capturing or publishing or transmitting an image of a private area of another person can be fined to up to $200,000 or serve a term, sorry, in seven years, uh, up to maximum of prison in conviction. Uh, Jovan, these uh, such cases have been uh, very prominent throughout the territory of the Virgin Islands, and we see where uh, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force is making uh, an asserted effort to warn persons, particularly of our younger generation, to make sure that they do not participate in such activities. Absolutely, and we do know it's very prominent because, you know, you're around your peers, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, more than likely you'll feel comfortable enough. Um, but like uh, the superintendent says, once it hits the internet, it's There's certainly no something back, you yes. can't take back. So we have to take really uh, full responsibility for ourselves. Continuing on, Kyron McMaster has established a new BVI national record for securing a second place finish at the 2021 US ATF Golden Games track meet at Mount Sac, running a time of 47.50 seconds. In his world ranked number two performance, Kyron broke his previous national record of 47.52, which he established in 2018. We have a clip of the very exciting uh, finish, and we want to take this opportunity to wish congratulations to the BVI's very own Mr. Kyron McMaster. Take a look. Complete the lineup, but right on the outside. 
But just intrigued to see here, Ryan Benjamin, we know what he's capable of. His season opener over hurdles, he didn't I could be over the hurdles at all in uh, a shortened 2020 campaign. So this will we'll see. The all-time number three, 23 years of age, same age as Michael Norman, his big pal, who we saw run pretty well earlier on, very well, in fact. But Benjamin, I'm sure, when you just get back into your, your natural comfort zone, you haven't seen those barriers for, uh, what is it, 18 months or so, longer. Master 47.58, his personal best goes back to 2018, by the way. Ryan Benjamin ducked under 47 seconds in uh, Zurich in 2019. Six of this field do have the Olympic qualifying mark, which for interest is 48.90. Only the athletes in lanes one, eight and nine don't have the qualifying mark. But Benjamin then in lane five, with the pressure likely to come from Alison Dos Santos. The emerging Brazilian, the Pan American Games champion in 2019, reached the final in Doha when he finished seventh. But he certainly seems to have improved since then. He's in four, Benjamin five, McMaster six, Selman seven, likely to be the protagonist. And Latin in three could have a say as well. Uh. Away we go then, live at uh, Mount Sack, the men's 400 meters hurdles. Pretty even through that first hurdle between Benjamin and McMaster out him. Dos Santos has started very conservatively, quite contrastingly to Kyra McMaster. It's McMaster and Benjamin at this stage. Also one from the outside, Khalifa Rossa has gone well through the first 200 metres. But Benjamin with McMaster outside him. Dos Santos now looking to get into that run, just chopping his stride. But it's still plenty to do to come from a long way back, Dos Santos. It's Benjamin now coming through on the inside of Kyron McMaster. Can anyone get near Rye Benjamin in the closing stages? He's moved a metre or so clear. McMaster keeping up to his work. Now Dos Santos trying to cover some ground. Benjamin over the final hurdle, though, and driving up towards the line. Dos Santos did come strong late on, but not enough. 47-1-4 for a season opener over hurdles is super, super impressive from Rye Benjamin. 47-1-3, it's rounded down to the world leading time. Benjamin lays down his marker. Well, that was a great race, wasn't it? Great opener, as you say, Chris. It's been a long time, hasn't it? I'm actually a bit of a stato. It's 587 days since his uh, last out and over the 10 barriers. I'm sure he'd be grateful to get that one out of the way. And it really was this last 100 metres after hurdle seven, those last three barriers where he pulled away from the rest of the field. Alison de Santos fi finishing really quick. He went off really slow that first 200 metres, coming through really strongly at the end there. McMaster had a good run as well, didn't he? And uh, he looked pleased with himself towards the end. You just see him there getting his breath back. And 47.14 seconds rounded down actually by one hundredth world lead so far. Yeah, well, some national records in there as well from McMaster and Dos Santos. So, uh, you have just broken Edwin Moses' long time standing record here in this event. What does that mean to you, Rye? Uh, it means a lot. It's funny because I was on a Zoom call with him a few weeks ago. Oh, really? That was our very own uh, Kyron McMaster coming in a second. Uh, Jovan continuing to do remarkable things as it pertains to the athletic scene uh, internationally. I think uh, Kyron um, serves as a true inspiration to up and coming uh, athletic uh, personnel who are aspiring of doing great things. He is to be commended. He's certainly a trailblazer for the BVI and we continue to show him support and be very proud of him. Um, Ron, it takes much more than practice. It takes yes. mental consistency and stability. And so we are so proud of you, uh, Mr. McMaster, for continuing to rock and fly the BVI flag high. Now, as we move on, as part of their overall thrust of pursuing projects that offer protection and restoration of the environment, the newly formed Rotary Club of Central Tortola has embarked on a mission to partner with local agencies to replant hundreds of mangroves lost to the 2017 hurricanes. Now, the club plans to deploy its members and other volunteers on a quarterly basis to replant mangroves across the territory's shoreline in coordination with the managers of the mangrove nursery at the H. Lavity Stout Community College. Now, the Ministry of Natural Resources, Labor and Immigration, as well as other lo local stakeholders, 
Now, club president Nelsia Sinjan uh, disclosed that the club embarked on its first mangrove uh, planting exercise on Saturday, April 17th, along the Seacows Bay Road in conjunction with officials from the HLSCC nursery. Some 130 seedlings were planted. She said, and I quote, Supporting the environment is Rotary's seventh area of focus, which are categories of service activities supported by global grants. We are keen to become fully involved in the projects that are sustainable and promote the projection of our ecosystem here in the Virgin Islands, St. John said. Now, the president added, and I further quote, we have aligned with the mangrove initiative by replanting mangrove seedlings, which are so needed to assist with the restoration of damaged coastlines due to storm surge and man-made factors. Now, mangroves are extremely important as they help to build the territory's resilience to future effects of storms and climate change. We believe that working together, we can rebuild the mangrove habitat, one mangrove at a time. End of quote. Now, viewers, Honorable Vincent O. Wheatley, the Minister for uh, Natural Resources, Labor and Immigration, recently acknowledged the several uh, community groups, including the Youth Empowerment Project and others who have planted over 860 seedlings at the Seacows Bay, Frenchman Ski, and a damaged section of Parakeeta Bay and Beef Island. According to Honorable Whitley, some 155 volunteers from community groups, youth organizations, and private sector entities engaged in planting or educational activities related to mangroves restoration and increasing coastal resilience. A further 107 persons from schools, uh, community-based organizations and private businesses have been engaged in planting or hands-on education at the mangrove nursery. Now, during the month of April alone, one additional 383 seedlings raised in the HLSCC mangrove nursery have been planted at new sites, which include Brandywine Bay. Uh, we have Manual Reef and North Sound around Bitter End, the Bitter End Yacht Club. Government is also planning to introduce new environment legislation, which will create what will be known as uh, environmentally sensitive species, which will be afforded a higher degree of protection. Honorable Whitley has announced that the first species to be listed once the legislation is passed will be mangroves. Now, the Rotary Club of Central Tertola was officially chartered on January 15, 2021, as the fourth Rotary Club in the BVI. Uh, we always want to say kudos to all of the nonprofit uh, organizational efforts here in the territory. But, Ron, we do see Rotary always taking it a step further. Yes. And really tapping into the community and also our ecosystem. And, you know, we've been really speaking about the importance of preserving the environment. And we see Rotary, the newest one uh, at that, really taking this and making it their mission. I could not agree with you more. I think it's imperative that we do uh, take our environment uh, seriously as we uh, traverse through these very difficult times. Uh, it, it's similar to your body. If you're not taking mm -hmm. care of it, um, it will not uh, produce as you wish it to. Uh, viewers still ahead, Dr. Michael Turnbull talks mental health awareness, and the BVI Red Cross makes its 65th years with commemorative license plate. We have all the details and so much more. After a word from our sponsors, we'll be right back. Gentlemen, inspiring gentlemen and our partners that hold us down. It's season two of the Art of a Distinguished Gentleman, taking you on the most inspiring journey with the best. 
and brightest distinguished gentlemen of the BVI. Raw, real-life lessons that translate to grounded, community-minded, well-rounded men like you've never seen them before. Governor Augustus J.U. Jasper, Jovan Klein, Neil Klein, and so much more. Turning modern-day men into 21st century distinguished gentlemen with yours truly, Ron Grant, a 284 Media production. Viewers, welcome back. Thanks for sticking with us. Jovan, as you know, and our viewers do know, May is a Mental Health Awareness Month, and we are speaking with one of the leading men of mental health here in the territory uh, as it pertains to mental health and our realization that we still have a very long way to go. We're talking uh, traumas, triggers, and treatment with Dr. Michael Turnbull. Take a look. Thank you so much for sticking with us. As a promise, we are continuing the conversation throughout the month of May. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and we are joined by expert uh, Dr. Michael Turnbull, director of the Wellness Center, clinical psychiatrist or psychologist, sorry. Dr. Turnbull, thank you so much for your time this afternoon, and welcome back. To, hey, Ron, uh, to it's, so, it's, it's so great to be here. Uh, thank you for welcoming me back into your studios. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be here to it for news uh, studios and uh, for everyone watching, uh, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and we want to just spread some uh, knowledge, some keys to tips for continue surviving, to make sure we could bolster all of our mental health. As we know, it's a very, very important thing. It's a seed of where we exist, yes. uh, so we have to take care of ourselves. Most definitely. Dr. Turnbull, before we get into the conversation, uh, you were speaking to me prior about a breathing exercise that you do mm -hmm. every so often. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, tell me about it. Yeah, so right before we started, um, Ron was great enough to indulge me in what we call 16 seconds to calm. Um, it was something that David G, a mindfulness expert, uses uh, with his clients and something that I've started to use with my clients as well. Uh, mindfulness is a way that we can concentrate and be in the present moment. So if you're out there viewing, this is a great way, no matter what's going on in your life, everyone has 16 seconds and a way that you can channel your energy and be able to calm. So if you, no matter where you are right now, I want you to do this. You have 16 seconds. I know Ron is going to do it with me. Sure. I want you to get something on your mind that's bothering you, mm -hmm. that's really frustrating, that one thing that's just really just on your nerves, whether it be a person, a thing, a financial situation. Right, great. So now you have it on your mind. Mm -hmm. I want you to put it in the forefront of your mind. I don't care how disturbing it is. And I just want you to follow me as best as you can. I want you to take one deep breath in. I want you to hold this breath, feel it filling up your lungs, hold it. And now I want you to breathe out slowly, pushing the breath back up through your lungs, out through your mouth. I want you to hold that breath out. And now breathe. Now if I was to ask you, hmm. If you were thinking about what I asked you to focus on, you'd be like, no, I'll just concentrate on breathing. That's because you were able to come into the present moment. You were able to now calm yourself and know that no matter what you're going through, breathing is important. Indeed. So that being able to stop, pause, allows you to get a 16 second to rest hmm. in the middle of your chaos. That's something that you could practice daily, hourly, moment to moment, because when we're present is when we're most peaceful. Anxiety, depression, uh, frustration, what that does is causes us to be away from the present moment. Anxiety is that we're worried about what to come. Right. Depression is we're sad about the past, the present, or the future. And sometimes we just appreciate and be present. It gives our brain enough permission to just calm down, concentrate on our breath. And you have 16 seconds to calm, oh, and I hope sure that do. you'll be able to do yeah. that in your daily lives. Dr. Mike, thank you so much for sharing that. It, it, it was uh, a good exercise. It reminded me of uh, uh, another activity, but um, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, yeah. <laughs> when we think of mental health um, in its entirety, it's such, unfortunately, still such a taboo topic. Um, men and mental health. Uh, we think of families and mental health, women and mental health. Um, what do you think? I'm going to get straight to the, the, the point. What do we have to do? in the 21st century to really get a grip on mental health as it pertains to uh, acceptance, realization, like we're still so far um, mm -hmm. and so still uh, behind. Why is that? Well, I, I think because there's still remnants of people thinking that if you have a mental struggle that somehow you're weak um, and even worse terms, crazy mm -hmm. or 
in some religious facets that you're not holy enough. Um, and we often judge those that have a sense of uh, needing a break or somebody that's having a hard time in life. Our, our mental well-being, you can have a lot of things going on. You can be physically healthy. But if you're sad, depressed, anxious, worried, traumatized, that the seed of who you are lies in your brain, who, where you think about yourself, what you do. And we have to be, have a comfortable conversation that it's okay to be sad at times. We all get anxious. Everyone uh, ha goes through different things. And our mental health, how we think about ourselves in our holistically is important. And so we have to have a conversation about, well, mental health is cool. What are you doing for your mental health? And some people have more uh, negative ways of coping mm -hmm. uh, with their mental health about being able to subdue their feelings because they don't want to feel sad. They don't want to feel angry. Uh, so happy hour becomes their best friend and becomes wow. a habitual way, but it's not a healthy outlet. Um, so we want to talk about mental health and the more we're able to do it, uh, it's easy. I mean, I've even now me being transparent, I was telling you, Ron, that before the last time I left uh, the BVI was a uh, Super Bowl of last year in, wow. in, in Florida. It's, you have, it's tough when you feel like COVID and the pandemic now, we're almost 14, 15 months into this, that it's had a significant, not only financial strain, but a significant strain on our well-being, how we feel about ourselves. And there's some people that are coping really well, but if you are being honest, all of us have had to adjust. And that mental flexibility is easier for some yes. and not as easy for others. And if you're having a particularly difficult time, it doesn't mean that you're any less weak or not as strong. It just means that you may need some assistance. And that's where we have to be able to have the conversation that some people are able to cope with different things. If you think about the volcano that's um, erupted in St. Vincent and you talk to people who are here, they're not there. They're not physically there, but their heart, their mind is there at home. They're struggling. They're feeling that trauma. Uh, four years ago in September now, we've been recovering from the trauma of Hurricane Irma, the devastation. And people who have been traumatized sexually, physically, that you have to live with these things in your mind. And these things seed in our mind. So I like to talk about how we can change inwardly, become more strong, resilient, so we become more resilient in our outside world, how people perceive us. Um, so we need to have the conversation and continue to have the conversation. And the best way to do it is having it with our children, uh, talking about how you're doing, um, mm. uh, being able to check in. It's an open conversation. It's not Viewers, now as we move on, the Ministry of Transportation, Works and Utilities has unveiled a limited edition commemorative license plate to mark the 65th anniversary of the British Virgin Islands Red Cross. Now, Minister for Transportation, Works and Utilities, Honorable Kai Raima, stated that the government of the Virgin Islands is especially grateful for the opportunity in this new regular to approve the commemorative motor vehicle registration plate to be used on vehicles for personal use in recognition of the BVI Red Cross's 65 years of service to the Virgin Islands. Honorable Kai Raima said, and I quote, it is a red letter day for the Red Cross in the Virgin Islands. I am pleased to have issued my first commemorative motor vehicle registration plate as Minister for Transportation and at the same time institute non-governmental organizations to request such registration plates as a fundraiser towards their humanitarian services." End of quote. Now, Honorable Reimer presented the limited edition license plate to the director of the BVI Red Cross, Ms. Stacy Lloyd, who expressed thanks on behalf of the board management, staff, and volunteers. She said, and I quote, I am happy to accept our 65th anniversary commemorative license plate, which will help to raise more visibility for our organization and our mission of helping the vulnerable in the community, she said. Now, Vera is the chairman of the board of directors in the BVI Red Cross, Mr. Choi Christopher, also extended congratulations to the organization on its 65th anniversary. Mr. Christopher said, and I quote, to be in existence for 65 years takes a high level of commitment and dedication of which the branch on a whole can be extremely proud of, Mr. Christopher said. Now the Road Traffic Act, CAP 218, authorizes the Ministry of Transportation, Works and Utilities as the institution to manufacture and issue to the Department of motor vehicles commemorative motor vehicles registration plates 
Now, the commemorative plates previously issued were we had the 60th Emancipation Celebration in 2014. We also had the 90th birthday of Her Majesty's Queen Elizabeth in 2016. Uh, and in addition to that, 100th anniversary of the Rotary Foundation in 2017. The Rotary's 100th anniversary of Rotary Foundation in 2017 was the only external initiative of the three previous commemorative plates, and 100% of the proceeds went to the government of the Virgin Islands. However, we do see the Red Cross being the first to obtain a portion of proceeds of its commemorative plate as a humanitarian organization. So this is where uh, nonprofits meet government and community. And I think it is a beautiful uh, collaborative effort to ensure that we are meeting the persons in need in our community. Uh, Jovan, the BVI Red Cross has been serving the territory of the Virgin Islands, uh, as we know, for 65 years. Uh, but let's just look at the 65 years and put that into perspective as to exactly what it means for the Red Cross to have been a paramount uh, service, uh, selfless and significant service to the territory of the Virgin Islands, natural disaster after natural disaster, uh, sporting event after mm -hmm. sporting event, and they continue to have a presence, they continue to... Uh, In addition, really, development training. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and, and continually to, to pass on the training, like you said, uh, to other persons. They have a, a number of young persons, young volunteers, uh, as well as young staff. I think uh, in this 65th year of their anniversary, I think they should be commended. Uh, they have also seen a number of directors, uh, like the late Reverend Idris O'Neill, uh, who contributed significantly to the development of the organization. And we have to really put into uh, perspective how much nonprofit organizations mean to us uh, mm -hmm. in the territory and how much they really aid um, in our betterment. Absolutely, yeah. and sometimes uh, they do it for little to nothing, so we are so... And they go unnoticed. Too. Absolutely. We want to thank uh, them for all the work that they continue to do. But viewers, still ahead of this very quick break, we are talking to Mr. Alton Bertie. It's exciting. Stick with us. There's more coming. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. Viewers, welcome back. We're almost out of time, but we want to uh, uh, toss to a, a quick interview uh, with the one and only Mr. Alton Birdie. Uh, he's a member of the 284 Foundation. They have a very exciting competition coming up. Take a look. Viewers, welcome back. Thanks for sticking with us. As a promise, Mr. Alton Birdie, welcome to welcome back rather to 284 Media. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, and I'm honored to be here. Indeed. Now, Nanny Key and 284 Foundation, of which you are a part of, are partnering to host an exciting art and photo competition, which is going to be uh, held in the British Virgin Islands. But before we get into this competition, uh, tell us a little bit about 284 uh, Foundation. I know it's a nonprofit, but how long has the organization been around? We've been around since 2018. Um, this came about, this is the dream child of um, our very excellent uh, designer, Kristen Fraser. Um, she just wanted to give back to the community in some way and particularly focusing on art, creativity, anything creative in, in general. So um, this is what it's about. The 284 Foundation, is, uh, we have about 10 departments which include photography, um, even down to technology, um, at anything to do with creativity. That's our mission. Wonderful. Uh, now, creativity is something that we are no strangers to here in the British Virgin Islands. We have a lot of artists, a lot of uh, talented persons. When you look at the uh, enormous challenges that we sometimes face in the territory as it pertains to uh, the arts, culture, and creativity, what encouragement would you give to young, aspiring, upcoming artists? I've been throughout the world and the BVI has some of the best creative in individuals anywhere. So we just have to nurture this. We just have to continue to nurture, nurture this, encourage all our creative individuals regardless of what it is. Um, I am also a musician as most people know and we have some of the best musicians anywhere. We have people like Brent Hoyt who has been around and he's been winning awards. Calling all artists and uh, photographers, be sure to sign up for this amazing event uh, being sponsored by Nanny Key in partnership with 284 Foundation.
viewers, that is all the time we have. My name is Yvonne Wilson. And I'm Ron Grant. It's always a pleasure to have a good rest of the day. Um, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.